Hey guys, welcome again to my full course series. I'm going to show you guys the comparison between six different machine learning models performance on predicting crypto's future prices. So I will show you how to build all these six different models and explain to you how they work. Like usual, all my codes will be shared to you throughout the entire video. So make sure to stay till the end of this video. Okay, here is the community return for the model called Reach Regression and I use it to trade across more than 8,000 hours and that's more than around 333 trading days. The blue line is the cumulative return generated by AI and the green line represents BTC USDT hourly cumulative return. You can see the price of Bitcoin didn't move a lot but this rich regression model has turned the initial investment into like double. Next, let me show you the performance from the simple linear regression this is not the best but not that bad actually it still made about 20 percent to 40 percent of gain it is more stable than the base asset which is the bitcoin itself all right next this machine learning model is called xg boost it has also generated impressive results although it didn't perform well during the downtrend but it went wild when there weren't much of a market movement throughout the rest of the testing period. I think this model is also worth a try. Okay, let's move on and see the result from this machine learning model called regression gradient boost trees. Unlike HG boost, this machine learning model loves downtrend. You can see it went up to about two times of the initial investment after experiencing the downtrend during the beginning. It doesn't do well when there isn't any market movements. So guess what you can do? You can combine the signals from XG boost and regression gradient boost trees. So you can use the regression gradient boost trees to trade the downtrend and and use extra boost to trade the flat period that's the strategy i can think of right now all right we still have other machine learning model like this one called random forest the best it did from the testing period was that it made three times of initial investment which was very decent because it only traded under a year when the bitcoin price were kind of flat last we have decision tree model which i have explained before for another video it made 50 percent gain for the initial investment but since it kind of fluctuates a lot, I won't be using it for my trading for performance like this. I can definitely run all these models together simultaneously when I trade Bitcoin. So far, I think what could benefit me the most are rich regression X3 boosts, regression gradient boost trees, and probably the random forest. Perhaps I could make a trade when more than two models are suggesting me the same buy or sell signal. I'm not going to show you how to do it in this video. For this video, I will only show you how to build these machine learning models, but I will definitely show you how to do it in the future videos. That's why you need to stay tuned to my channel. Okay, now let's look at their evaluation metrics. MSE stands for mean square error. It is the average square difference between the estimated values and the actual value. The lower, the better. RMSE is the root mean square error. It is just adding a square root to the MSE. So it is the lower, the better as well. And MAE stands for mean absolute error. It calculates the mean absolute difference between the predictions and the test data. You can see both linear regression and rigid regression have the lowest error. They are more accurate from the statistic point of view xg boost and random forest arrows are slightly higher but they are still considered as very low if you compare them with the regression gradient boost trees which has an mse of 26 percent and our mse of 51 percent if you want to continue to use my code to do your test please make sure to try your best to get them to closer to zero please tell me later about how that go from the comment below all right now i'm about to show you guys my code but first of all, please be noticed that we have a disclaimer here. All material provided here are for educational use only. If you decided to use this material for live trading, you are trading on your own risk. Alright, these are all the essential libraries and modules you need to import for this project. Some machine learning models were imported from sklearn and you will be needed to import gradient boost trees and actually boost separately from LightGBM and actually boost modules. Now you can load the data 
and get rid of the columns you don't need. After that, you need to calculate the relative change for close price and store under a separate column. Here, we have our first function, which is used to calculate super chain index from trading view. If you need to display the indicators, you can use this upper band and lower bands, but we will not be using these bands. We will only use the super chain indicator, which will be returned as ST. When we implement the super chain strategy, we set up few conditions and that will give us the signals to decide our trading position which will be our next step. These signals will return as ST signals. Now we can run the super chain indicator which is the first function and get those results stored inside our data frame. And after that, we can calculate the signals using the second function and use these signals to generate a new list called position. In order to give a fair test result, we will need to make sure we compare the signal for today with the return for tomorrow because the return for tomorrow is calculated by using tomorrow's close to divide it by today's close. So no matter if you are using hourly data or daily data, please make sure to shift your rows. So by simply putting the signal for now in the same row with the following return, you can solve this problem easily. This function is used to calculate cumulative return starting from $1. Feel free to change it to any dollar amount you like. For this part, I have done the styling before plotting my graph. And here is the code to plot the performance for the trading view super chain strategy. It says above the price of Bitcoin and that's great. So what we're gonna do next is to find ways to optimize this strategy with machine learning models. This is the time to add more technical indicators into our data frame and use them as features for trading. The indicators I have added to our data frame is RSI, KD, SMA, CMO, and MOM. You can build these common technical indicators easily with the TA library. Please pay attention on the line 3 here. I have made a data frame copy and let it start from the fourth row. Why did I do that? Let me move up to the super chain signal calculation between line 19 to line 21. You can see my super chain signal begins from the second value and returns start from the third value. But between line 23 to line 26, I have done a multiplication for these returns and signals and I use these super chain returns as my indicator. Here I must shift road again because I have already had the signal generated for tomorrow. So I need to put it in the same row with return for day after tomorrow. So I will have to shift the row again. Alright, we just need to speed our data to 80% for training and 20% for testing. We are good to go. The first model I built is the linear regression model. It is the most simple one. The output is a linear combination of all these feature vectors. The model will use optimization method and minimize the mean square error. The relationship between the independent and dependent variables is simple linear relationship. For rich regression, it is one kind of regularized linear regression. It has implement something so called weight decay regularization. This is added to the loss function of linear regression. So the weights of features are depending on their coefficient. If one feature has very low coefficient, its weight will be less. So the influence on the final prediction will be very limited. Then we have built a decision tree machine learning model with max step of 32. We have explained decision tree thoroughly from an earlier video, so I will not talk too much about it here. It basically speeds features into different subspaces and fit a very small model to each subspace. How does it split? It has an algo called CRT card and card decides when it needs to keep splitting in order to minimize the error. Next, we have built a random forest model with max step of 15. The technology behind the random forest model is like group decision making. Each base learner repeatedly draws subsets from the whole training dataset. You can think of each base learner as a separate decision tree model, and eventually it will use voting method to make final decision for predictions based on all these base learners or decision trees. It's like a decision tree 2.0. 
Okay, after that, we have regression gradient boost trees with max step of 4. Gradient boost trees has implement so-called gradient boosting algo. Gradient boosting tree use a few weak learners to produce a powerful committee of models which are used for making prediction and errors are minimized by gradient descent algo. Finally, here is the X3 boost model with max step of 20. One thing I need to mention here is that for X3 boost, you need to convert your data into a specific metric for X3 boost to train. You can use the D matrix from the module to do that. Like gradient boost trees, X3 boost is a decision tree based machine learning model and it was developed later than the gradient boost tree. The method for this model is similar to gradient boost tree, which applies the principle of boosting weak based learners using gradient descent. But X3 boost also has improvement on system optimization and algorithmic enhancement so it requires less computing resources and shorter training time. I summarize all the evaluation results with the data frame and here is the code for that. For calculating returns of our models, I have made two functions, y2, because the other one calculates the return in a reverse way. You can see the random forest and gradient boost tree returns were calculating using the reverse way. The latest cumulative returns are printed out. For the rest of the code, it just printed out all the graphs and that's all the code I want to share to you. When you do your own practicing, please take in mind that there is no one model better than other models, but only the right model for the right problem. Okay, that's everything for today. I hope you guys like the content and please feel free to leave a comment below and share how you build your own AI on trading. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you on the next one.